Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little, and today I am going to teach you how to play poker for the very first time. Now this video is going to assume you know legitimately nothing about poker besides it's played with a deck of cards, okay? By the end of this video, you will have some idea of how the game works, also what beats what, and finally, a basic strategy that will help you experience some amount of success at the poker table. I'm a question that I'm often asked by my fans are one of my friends is going to play poker for the first time in a casual game or in a home game or in a charity tournament. Do we have any tips to help them experience success? And um, yes, I do. So first one ask, how novice are you, right? You may already know some of the things in this video, but you need to ask yourself, do you know the rules slash how poker even plays out? Do you know the hand rankings? Do you know basic strategy? Well, if you know these things already, then this video is not for you. But if you have never played poker or played it only a little bit, you're gonna learn a lot here. So let's get ready. Well, first, what are the rules of the game and how does it play out? I think it is best to look at some examples. All right, here is the example of a poker table. At the start of every poker hand, there are gonna be two players who put in chips, okay? It's gonna be the small blind, you see noted right here, small blind, SB, and the big blind, noted BB, right? In this scenario, the blinds are 150, 300. In your game, they may be 2550 or 50, 100, 100, 200, 5,000, 10,000, etc. The small blind is almost always half the size of the big blind. Okay? So those two people put in the small blind and the big blind. And then we also have this thing called the dealer button. The dealer button notates who goes last on each betting round, besides the first. We'll get to that in just a minute. All right, at the start of the game, everyone's dealt two cards face down. Don't show those to anyone. That would be very bad. And then the player to the left of the initial, of the big blind, right? Remember, it goes dealer button, small blind, big blind. Player to the left of the big blind goes first. That player can either raise, which means put in an amount more than 300. It has to be at least two times 300. Or they can call, which means they want to put in 300. This is likely what you're going to see in most small six games. A lot of people are going to put in 300 or they can fold if they don't like their starting cards, okay? So let's just see what happens here. This player doesn't like his hand, so he folds. This player raises to 1,200. That is four times the big blind. You're gonna see that most um, bets are uh, expressed either in terms of big blinds or a percentage of the pot, but for now, 1,200 is fine. Opponent makes it 1,200. This person thinks that's too much. Folds, 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 folds. Folds around to me and the big blind. Now. I already have 300 in the pot, right? So if I want to see the flop, I have to put in 900 more, which is the difference between 1,200 and 300. A pair of sevens is pretty good, so I'm gonna put in 900 more. You see, I started here with 20, well, with 30,000 chips. My opponent started with a little bit less than me, only 25,000. After I call, that money's gonna go out of my stack, right? We're gonna take the chips out of our stack, put them in the pot. There they are. Current pot goes up to 3,000, and we see the flop. Flop comes eight, five, four. So I have a pair of sevens, so a marginal hand. Usually middle pairs, bottom pairs are kind of marginal. Top pair and better is usually pretty good. We'll get to that in just a little bit though. So now, after the flop, the person to the left of the dealer goes first. That's me, you see the button here, the dealer button. I go first. I think my hand is marginal, so I'm going to check. I don't wanna put in more money. My opponent now bets 2,400, okay? Is my hand good enough to call 2,400? Probably, so I'm gonna put in 2,400 more. I could also raise or I could fold. If I wanted to raise, I could make it, let's say 6,000, and then my opponent would have to put in the difference between 6,000 and 2,400. Anyway, we're gonna call. Another card comes out. This is called the turn card. The first three are called, called the flop. The next is called the turn. Now, again, the person to the left goes first. That's me. I, person to the left of the dealer goes first. I check, and my opponent checks behind, which means he does not wanna put more money in the pot now. Now we get one more card. This is the final card. So we get three at the beginning. Well, we get two in our hand at the very beginning. Then we get three, that's called the flop. The next one card is called the turn. The final card is called the river, but that doesn't really matter that much. Now, person to the left of the dealer goes first again. That is again me. I'm gonna check, my hand is still marginal. My opponent bets 7,000, okay? Now at this point, if I want to compare my hand to my opponent's hand to see who wins, I have to put in 7,000, which, you know, is a lot, right? Or I could just fold and give my opponent the pot, which means I don't get to see what my opponent has. 
In this situation, I decide to call. I had a pair of sevens. Sevens are higher than sixes, so I end up winning the pot. Okay, let's take a look at another example. In this hand, we're playing now 300, 600 blinds, right? Notice the dealer button moved. Every hand, the dealer button moves to the left one seat. That's to make it fair so that um, every person is last the same amount of the time on average, right? Otherwise, um, you're gonna find that position is, well, position is very important in poker. And if you go last more often than your opponents, that's gonna be very valuable for you. You typically wanna play way more hands in position than out of position because you get more information. Here I am effectively out of position, right? Notice I'm a long way from the button. And I have ace two suited. We're gonna discuss this, but suited aces are usually pretty good. So I'm gonna raise, blinds are 300, 600. I decide to raise to a little bit more than two times the big blind, which is usually pretty good poker. I make it 1400. This guy calls. Notice this guy's very shallow stacked. He only has 3600. That's only six big blinds, right? It's not a whole lot. Small blind calls and big blind calls. Flop comes nine, five, two, giving me bottom pair, which is a marginal hand. In this scenario, I did decide to bet though. I bet 3,000 chips. Now this player has to put in 3,000 or fold. He decides to fold. This player decides to put in 3,000 and this player folds. So these two players who put in money before the flop came now cannot win the pot. They gave up, right? All right, now the next card comes. It's my opponent's turn first, because remember, he's to the left of the dealer button. He likes to check, and now it's my turn. And now I decide to go all in. I put all of my chips in. Whenever you're playing No Limit Hold'em, you can only lose the amount of money that is in front of you. So don't think you can pull out money from your pocket or anything like that. In this scenario, I go all in, and now my opponent decides to call. He has three sixes. That's a very good hand. I have a bottom pair, but a flush draw. We get to see one more card. Once everyone is all in, you don't get to see any more. There, there's no more betting, right? Because all the money is all in. And in this scenario, my opponent's hand beats my hand and he wins a nice pot. All right, let's take a look at one more example. In this hand, this player puts in 2,600 chips, folds around to me. These players don't like their hands. And I decide to call with 10-2 suited. Don't try this at home. This is not a good hand. <laughs> so now who's to the left of the dealer? It's me. I decide to check. My opponent bets 3,500. I call with my middle pair and flush draw. Next card is a three. I'm first, right? I check. My opponent bets 8,500. I decide to call again. River's an eight. I check. And my opponent bets again. And this time, I decide to fold. So now, I don't even get to see what my opponent has. I just straight up lose the pot. And that is not really ideal, not what you want to have happen. But in this spot, I thought my opponent had mostly better hands than me. So I folded. You don't have to call all the way down just because you started with a good hand or because you made a good hand on the flop or the turn. Um, on the river, if you think you don't have the best hand, you should get out of the way. All right, so that is the game flow. Now let's talk about what beats what. What are the basic hand rankings? Feel free to take a screenshot of this. Feel free to share it with your friends, do whatever you want. At the end of each, at the end of the hand, you compare your best five card hand to that of your opponents. Let's go back over here to this situation. Notice my best five cards are ace, two, I'm sorry, two, two, because that's a pair, two, two, ace, jack, nine. And our opponent has three sixes. Our opponent has six, 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 jack, nine. So you see over here, three of a kind is way higher than one pair, right? Since three of a kind is higher than one pair, my opponent wins. Let's just go down the hand rankings really quick. We have a straight flush that is five cards of the same suit in order. That's going to be king, queen, jack, 10, 9, all clubs, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, all hearts, etc. And whenever you are comparing hands, you always go from the highest to the lowest. So if, let's say one person has king, queen, jack, 10, 9 of clubs. The other one has um, queen, jack, 10, 9, 8 of clubs. The king is going to win because that's higher, right? Next, four of a kind. That is four of four cards of the same rank, like 4, 4, 4, 4, jack, or 9, 9, 9, 9, 9 3. Next is a full house, 22266 is a good example. This is three and two. Whenever you're comparing full houses, the three of a kind is what you compare first. So if I have ace, 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 two, two, and you have, let's say, 33399, three, nine, nine, the three aces are higher than the three nine, so I'm gonna win. Next, a flush. This is just five cards of the same suit in any order. Okay, they can be five card, any five cards. Next is five cards in order. That's called a straight. This is king, queen, jack, 10, nine. 
five, four, three, two, ace. An ace is either high or low, so you can have ace, king, queen, jack, 10. That is also a straight. That's the best straight. Next, we have three of a kind. That is three cards of the same rank, like three, 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 four, two. Again, if you both players have three of a kind, you compare the highest one to the lowest one. So if one is ace, 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 two, two, ace, 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 two, three. The other is king, 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 four, two. The three aces will win. Next, we have two pairs, um, two cards of the same rank plus two cards of a different rank. Next, we have one pair, which is just one, uh, just two cards of the same rank. This is often what you're going to have in No Limit Hold'em. You're usually going to end up having one pair. And then you have everything else. That's usually going to be ace high, king high, pretty much anything that's not any of the hands above, right? In general, um, it certainly depends on the board, but you're going to find for the most part, two pair or better is usually pretty good, assuming there's not two pair on the board, let's say. But remember, you're always comparing your best five cards to the five cards of your opponent. But if you remember back, there are five cards on the board and two in your hand. So two of the cards don't get used. So sometimes there will be a tie when both players have the same cards. But very often, you're going to find that um, one person does win. So how do you figure out who wins? Well, you compare your best five cards to your opponent's best five cards to see. When you're playing live poker or online, when you get to the end of the hand, always just turn your cards up. Do not count on yourself to be able to read the board properly every time. As you get more experience, you'll just be able to read the board every time and you'll always know who wins. But when you like experience, when you get to the end, just turn your hand up and make the dealer figure it out. That is the dealer's job. They will figure it out for you. So let's take a look at a very basic scenario. We have a board of king of clubs, jack of clubs, six of spades, five of hearts, four of clubs. So who wins between these two hands? Ace, king of spades, or eight, seven of diamonds? Well, take a second, figure it out. Pause the video if you want. Notice ace, king has top pair. Okay, so this player has king, king, ace, jack, six. Pretty good hand. This eight, seven, though, has a straight. Eight, seven, six, five, four. So this straight is actually very, very strong, and it is going to win. Next, what wins? Queen, ten of clubs, or nine, eight of spades? Well, in this scenario, Queen 10 of Clubs is a flush, which was very high up on the ranking, right? This 9-8 of Spades is literally nothing. <laughs> the 9-8 of Spades is total garbage. This is a hand you should like, not even be in this pot with by the end, and you should be getting out of the way. Next, how about Pocket Kings or 8-2 of Clubs? Well, Pocket Kings has three of a kind, right? Three of a kind is pretty strong, but the 8-2 of Clubs has a flush. And remember, going back to the hand ranking chart, a flush is higher than three of a kind, so the eight two of clubs is going to win. And eventually this will become all very obvious to you and easy for you to figure out, but when you have no experience, you have to practice. So get out a deck of cards, put out five cards on the board, get two different starting hands, and see who wins. Do that over and over and over until it becomes very, very obvious to you. You're going to have to practice a little bit if you want to be anywhere near competent. So now... Um, now you know how to play. That's it. So you go through the hand. You already know how the hand plays out. And you know what beats what. That's really all you need to know. Now we're going to give you a little bit of basic strategy so that you have some chance of success. Now your first two cards, when you get them, do not think you have to play all the cards. You'll see some players in the game who literally play any two cards. They can't help themselves. You don't want to do that. In general, you're going to want to be playing pocket pairs. That's something when you look down, you have like two kings or two threes. The higher ones are always better, and that's going to be true for all of these hands. So kings are way better than threes, because if you have a pair of kings and it doesn't improve to three of a kind, well, you can still win a lot of the time, right? But if you have a pair of threes, it's kind of unlikely to be the best hand by the end. Next, strong big cards. These are going to be pretty much most cards. Uh, two, two cards jack or higher, like ace jack, king jack, queen jack. It's pretty good. King queen's pretty good. Those hands should be played in most situations. Next, you have suited aces. These hands are great because they can make the best flush, and they often, often have um, an ace, which is sometimes good at the end. Ace high does win sometimes. And if it does make a pair, it's usually top pair with a good kicker. Um, next, we have suited connectors. This is going to be hands like 10, 9 of clubs, hands like um, 8, 7 of diamonds, etc. Um, going back to comparing hands, by the way, we did not mention kickers. Let's say this player has... Ace, king of spades. This player has king, queen of, can't have spades. Let's pretend like he has king, queen of clubs, just for simplicity. In this scenario, let's compare the two hands, right? We have king, king, ace, jack, six. This player, though, has king, king, 
Queen Jack Six. This card here, the one that is the highest card that is not the pair, is called the Kicker. And the Kicker is quite relevant. This is why, well, we're, as we're about to see, some of the worst hands you can play are a high card and a low card. Because Ace King, when it makes the top pair, has the worst Kicker, right? The two is very, very bad. And that's gonna result in you losing a lot of pots where you make a top pair. So some of the worst hands, these are ones that should almost never be played, are high cards and low cards. Also junky connected cards like six, four, eight, seven, eight, six, stuff like that. Um, just general low cards, seven, two, five, two, nine, three, those are all very bad. And junky suited cards are usually not playable as well. So I don't see a hand like 10, three suited and think it's great. I know one of my examples was 10, two suited. Uh, and that was a little bit optimistic. So these are some of the worst hands. You almost always don't want to start with those. All right, next. Um, when you are actually playing, you always want to calculate your stack in terms of big blinds, okay? So whenever you look at your stack, say, well, let's go back to our example here. Let's start this hand. You see we have 20,000 chips playing 300, 600. 20,000 divided by 600 is 33. This program here does that for you automatically. Notice this player has 5,000. And again, 5,000 sounds like a big number, but it's not really. It's only eight big blinds here, right? So you always wanna calculate your chip stack in terms of big blinds, okay? It's very, very important. Sometimes you're gonna have a very, a very deep stack. Like right here, you see we have 30,000 chips with a 300 big blind. So we actually have 99 or 100 big blinds, right? So definitely keep that in mind that you need to keep track of your stack in terms of big blinds. All right, again, you can only lose the amount you have in front of you. And when you have 40 big blinds or more, you're kind of deep stacked. Between 10 and 40, you have a medium stack. And with fewer than 10, you have a short stack. But these are just broad terms. So I'm gonna give you a few tips on playing each of those stack sizes. And then we're gonna be done. So when you're deep stacked, this is when you have 40 big blinds or more, you can call raises with decent starting hands. Remember this decent starting hands we discussed, right? All of these hands are quite good and quite playable when we are deep stacked. Um, you generally want to raise to three big blinds with your playable hands when everyone folds to you because that is going to give you a chance to steal the pot immediately. And, you know, with your best hands, you want to be playing a big pot because you're the favorite. Um, if you are against only one player after the flop, so say you raise to three big blinds and the big blind calls, you usually want to make a bet of about 50% of the size of the pot, which is going to be roughly the same amount you made it before the flop. And against one player, you usually want to keep betting on the later rounds when you have a strong made hand. This is going to be top pair with a good kicker or better. Or a draw. That's usually a pretty strong strategy that's going to be tough to do anything against. And, fun enough, you get to bluff some, right? I know some people are going to be afraid to bluff, but you get to bluff a lot whenever you have your draws. Because with your draws, sometimes they're going to improve to a good hand. So say you have four clubs or four spades and you keep betting. Well, sometimes that spade comes on the turn or the river and you make a very, very good hand. And that is sweet. Um, sometimes you don't get there and well, maybe you keep bluffing on the river. It's okay to bluff. Don't think you have to only play to make the best hand. Next, when you're medium stacked, this is similar to when you're shallow stacked, but you cannot call raises as often, especially with the hands that are trying to make flushes or straights. So hands like eight, seven of diamonds goes down in value as you get shallower stacked. Um, so you do need to be a bit more cautious with the speculative hands. Also worth mentioning, if someone raises before you, and you have fewer than 25 big blinds, consider just going all in. Push the whole stack in. It's okay, it's risky, but they're gonna fold a lot of the time and that's gonna just give you a lot of small pots. And when they do call you, you're usually, you're usually gonna win 40% of the time or so. I know you're not a favorite, but you're gonna win a lot of small pots that more than make up for the times that you do get called. Um, next, when you're shallow stacked, this is when you have 10 big blinds or fewer, you usually want to go all in or fold any hand that you want to play. No more calling, no more raising small. You just want to go all in. I know this is risky, but you're either going to win a small pot, which is what's going to happen a lot of the time, or you get to gamble for a big pot and have a chance to actually chip up and win a big hand. So that's it. Those are some basic tips. We did it in 20 minutes. That's good. After this video, you're going to have at least a chance to get in there, play some cards, play poker, and have fun. Don't forget that poker is a game, and games are supposed to be fun. I know a lot of things are gonna be going through your mind while you're playing, but be careful not to get overwhelmed. Enjoy yourself, have fun with the experience. And remember, this is your first time or your fifth time or whatever it is. So you're probably gonna lose. Almost everyone loses their first time. I know I 
was not very good when I first started, and, and now I've done quite well at poker, right? So don't be so devastated if you do happen to lose your first time. It's okay. Have fun. Get in there and enjoy yourself. So that's me it for this video. If you want to practice poker a little bit more, you remember that Henry player I showed you earlier? I actually have some quizzes where I explain to you how I play in a lot of situations. Some of them are tricky, some of them are easy, but you can go give it a try for yourself and learn strategy a little bit more before you actually go and play your game. That's what I would suggest you do if you have a little bit more time. You can go to pokercoaching.com and get a completely free seven day trial. There's no credit card re required. And that is a great way to continue learning without actually putting any money at risk. So go check it out at pokercoaching.com. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, if this helped you enjoy your first poker experience, please let me know in the comments below. I am out to help you have fun. And if you want, become the best poker player you can possibly be. So thanks for watching this video. If this will be useful for any of your friends, please share it with them. Please click like, please subscribe. Again, don't forget to have fun. Thanks for watching.